turn. Volcarona can just go out and overheat and one hit KOization. So True. you have to be weary of both directions from this Volcarona. Yeah, and so something that both players are going to need to keep in mind is speeds. Do we see the Tornadus versus the Whimsicott? How do those Tailwinds actually match up against each other? And we're about to get our answer because we have both of the Tailwind users on for either player. And it's all about the offense here as Grant has the Reggie Drago and Dominic has the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Same thought process for both players. Get the Tailwind setter on the field combined with the big spread attacking special attacker. The challenge for Grant here is that Calyrex is faster. A Dragon Energy that comes after a Choice Specs Astral Barrage is not going to do that much damage. Now, you can still try to trade it away. Richie Draco might be able to take an Astral Barrage. Could be iffy. And then trip Draco Meteor back for a ton of damage into Calyrex. Or you can pivot around and find something like the Chiyu out of the back that can possibly switch into an Astral Barrage and then be naturally faster than Calyrex Shadow Rider if you're assuming Tailwinds from both sides. But first, it's a crystallization for the Calyrex Shadow Rider. No worries about the damage into Reggie Drago if you add the offensive Ghost crystallization on top of that Astral Barrage damage. Yeah, at least with the Reggie Drago protecting, you can scout out what this Shadow Rider Calyrex is going to lock into with those choice specs. But Grant gets a chance to get this Tailwind up and running first. So does Dominic decide to match that or just stagger it? It is going to be the match of the Tailwind, so you know that these speeds are going to be evened out, and these Tailwinds will expire at the same time. But this Calyrex going for the Astral Barrage. This Whimsicott does have a Focus Ash to be able to hold on, but for not much longer after this Astral Barrage does hit the Whimsicott. Yeah, that Focus Sash is now going to be spent. Both of these Pokemon are going to be in KO range of that next Astral Barrage. And Dominic has the speed advantage fully in his favor. There's no really disruptive Prankster Ooh. option here for Whimsicott. Just has Moonblast and Cotton Spore um, to, to try to slow down the other side. Uh, Regidrago could find a, a window in that way. Um, gonna be tricky though. It is gonna be tricky and it's a hard call to make because Dominic still has so many other offensive pieces in the back, but I am super intrigued to see how Grant might play around this Cotton Spore to see if that could give him some type of advantage. This Reggie Drago, though, still has the same problem as you were talking about before. Good news, though, is that there is no wide guard available right now because Smeargo is not shown itself quite yet. But Calorie Shadow Rider kind of got what it wanted, and it's going to be the Iron Hands that ends up taking its place as the Cotton Spore comes through. So both the Tornadus and this Iron Hands are going to have their speeds harshly dropped. So that's two stages here, allowing this Reggie Drago to outspeed. And that Dragon Energy at full power is going to bring that Tornado so low. And even the Iron Hands with the Assault Fist is not going to take that super well. The good news for Dominic is that Whimsicott is gone. Spent one turn taking an Astral Barrage, spent another turn taking a Bleak Wind Storm. The speed drop doesn't matter that much on Iron Hands. And with a game that could go this fast and be this based on who has the speed advantage at which situation, having Tornadus outlast Whimsicott, be able to threaten a second Tailwind possibly in the game, or just make sure that Whimsicott cannot get itself a second Tailwind or another Cotton Spore, could mean that the Calyrex Shadow Rider is well positioned in the end game to sweep. But the other big obstacle for the Calyrex Shadow Rider is this Choice Scarf Chiyu going to be naturally faster and can throw dark moves at the Calyrex Shadow Rider. We already saw the Trastalization used and is not a defensive Trastalization that helps with dark moves coming from Chiyu. Uh, and so with so much of Iron Hand's health bar, that'd be another way you could have dealt with Chiyu, been able to, to tank a hit and then try to drain punch the Chiyu, but that health bar was spent kind of bailing Kelly or Shadow Rider off out of the previous position, which means both of these Pokemon are just totally vulnerable to Dragon Energy. No Protect available for Tornadus on the other side either, means you can't try to stall your way through this turn. It's so tough as well because I think like if you're Dominic, you're really hoping that maybe you get a chance to stall out a little bit here. You do get the fake out into the Reggie Drago and you can help set up the Rain Dance. So it's going to mitigate some of these uh, fire type attacks from this Chew if it decides to go for that. The Dark Pulse in the Tornadus takes it out. So both Tailwind options are now off the field for our trainers. But Dominic gets a free switch back in. This Calyrex Shadow Rider could come back in and not have that minus two speed drop. Or Dominic might have that Rapid Strike Urshifu in the back that you could have set that Tailwind for, or that Rain Dance for. The unrevealed Pokemon is really going to be critical here for Dominic because if Shadow Rider comes in now, it's just going to be facing down a Choice Scarf Dark Pulse. So Urshifu, a much better option, is going to resist that Choice Scarf 
uh, Dark Pulse and threaten a ton of damage to either side. I think a really well-reasoned turn from Grant on the prior turn. She throws the Dark Pulse at Tornadus and understands that if Iron Hands goes for a Drain Punch, well then Reggie Drago will get a chance to KO Iron Hands. And if it doesn't and just fake out, fakes out Reggie Drago, well then Chiyu is still safe on the field. So despite uh, Chiyu not itself ensuring that Iron Hands can't get a Drain Punch off, that turn was safe to prove that no Drain Punch was coming. But no Drain Punch doesn't mean no Rapids, no Surging Strikes from this Urshifu Rapid Strike. Uh, this is going to be another position where Grant's going to have to play carefully to not lose Chiyu, because as soon as Chiyu goes down, there may be no backstop for the Calyrex Shadow Rider from just sweeping through your team. Yeah, and with so few priority options as well, once these Tailwinds expire, it's going to be very difficult for anything to be able to keep up with this Calyrex Shadow Rider too. Uh, so we see Chiyu actually retreat for now. Wants to know that that Choice Scarf is available. You can also lock into something else later, maybe even when the range expires. And Zacian going to finally hit the field. Gets its attack boost with the Intrepid Sword. But is it going to be able to actually hold its own? At the close combat into the Reggie Drago is plenty to be able to knock it out. The good news for Grant is that this Urshifu is going to become a little bit easier to pick off now that it has that defensive drop and the special defense if you're looking at that Chiyu. But the Drain Punch into the Zacian, it is going to be neutral damage thanks to its typing, but this Iron Hands is gonna get back just a little bit of HP. Beyond the special defense drop from the close combat, really crucial that, that Grant now has the knowledge that the Urshifu is locked in to close combat. Terrestrialization hasn't been spent here. That means the Chiyu can just lock, can just spin the Terrestrialization to become a ghost type, be immune to close combat, force the Urshifu off the field. The only thing they come in instead is the Calyrex Shadow Rider. We've talked about the problems that ha that has. So this could be a, a couple turns of kind of unwinding this position if Grant goes for the Ghost Terrestrialization. Of course, the Ghost Terrestrialization means that if you have any mistake, Astral Barrage just cleans up Chiyu. Zation comes in there, gives a good amount of health up for the Drain Punch from Iron Hands, but definitely worth preserving Chiyu in that position. Um, if Chiyu had just taken a Drain Punch instead while trying to Dark Pulse one of these targets, things would look, look a lot more difficult for Grant. And of course, Zation can now threaten great damage into this Iron Hands. Ooh. Well, is actually going to double into the Urshifu here. So covers for the Urshifu potentially staying in with the drops that it has should be taken out by both of these attacks. But you also know that you cover for the switch if that Calyrex Shadow Rider were to make an appearance, locking into the Dark Pulse. But the Terrestrialization gets spent, and that is going to be the Chiyu going to the Ghost type. Chiyu now immune to the close combat that Urshifu has locked into, and who's going to be the most pivotal piece for Gran in this game. Well, the Dark Pulse is going to go into the Urshifu first. Even though it's not very effective, it does have a chance to flinch, and that it does. So the Zacian gets to follow up with the Sacred Sword and take it out before this Urshifu gets a chance to move. Huge turn there for, Do for Grant as the we do see the Wild Charge into the Zacian, and it's still able to hang on through that. But can this Calorous Shadow Rider from Dominic come in and actually clean everything up? Just no, it's going to take a Chiyu Dark Pulse. There's no way to avoid that inevitability at this point. Chiyu is faster, there's no redirection, there's no protect. The Chiyu Dark Pulse is coming out on the next turn. I have to imagine that Calyrex is not bulky enough to take that super effective Dark Pulse, but that is Dom's one uh, chance into this end game. Uh, the Dark Pulse flinch on the previous turn probably prevented a close combat into Zacian. If that had been enough damage to actually pick up a KO on Zacian, then maybe that starts to twist the game. But without a missed KO, I don't think it really, uh, if it misses the KO, I don't think it changes much about this end game. That is all about Chiyu. Uh, especially because the Chiyu being the ghost type means that this Iron Hands can't really hit it very well either. So the Drain Punch is going to get you very little, even if you were able to lock it into the Zacian, but that is going to protect. And this Chiyu is free to go for the Dark Pulse into a Choice Specs Calyrex that doesn't have the option to protect itself. So big KO. This Iron Hands is now all by itself and is going to struggle. Even if we see the Wild Charge into the Chiyu, which we do, you're still taking recoil damage, and the Chiyu doesn't get taken down. The problem for Iron Hands, if it had a much more health left, it could maybe beat these Pokemon. Chiyu locked into Dark Pulse is going to do fairly little damage to Iron Hands, and the Zacian does not have Play Rough to hit into the uh, Iron Hands, but Iron Hands' health bar is just too low. The combination of Dark Pulse and Sacred Sword and all of that recoil from the previous game, which would have been if Urshifu had locked into Surging Strikes instead of Close Combat, things probably look a lot easier for Dominic. The hesitance to click Surging Strikes is because of those triple Grass types on the other side. Even with Zacian as the fourth unrevealed Pokemon, Dominic wasn't ready to assume that it wasn't a Moongus or Ogre Pond that was about to switch into that slot and take a Surging Strikes. 
I think it's tough in this matchup too because I wonder how much impact we actually could see with the Zacian, but we'll have to wait and find out because it is the Smeargle next to that Shadow Rider Calyrex that you were hoping for. And with once again, Grant leading the Whimsicott and the Reggie Drago. This can quickly turn into a very kind of 50-50 situation. Do you think the Reggie Drago is going to drag an energy and so you wide guard and prevent that damage? Or do you think the Reggie Drago is going to Draco Meteor so you follow me away that Draco Meteor, just have it bring Smeargle to Focus Sash? Or do you just spore the Reggie Drago if you don't think it's about to get speed control or if you think it's going to be Tailwind and you and you can just maybe switch Calyrex out and get a spore off? There's some path that direction as well, but it's just faint for now, trying to break oh. the Focus Sash and get some extra damage in. But that means only Tailwind on the other side. Means that the Tailwind for the Whimsicott it allows this Reggie Drago to outspeed, and the Draco Meteor does connect into the Calyrex just to get the one hit knockout. A hard call that Dominic had to make, and a call that he got wrong. Yeah, call that was very poorly for him. It could have been even worse with the Dragon Energy instead in that situation, but you can see what he was looking for. If Granted made the same turn one play as in game one of protecting Reggie Drago and Tailwinding, well, then a combination of Feint and uh, the Astral Barrage would have taken Whimsicott off the board and set Smeargle up to then protect the Calyrex Shadow Rider on the next turn. But because Reggie Drago just goes out on the offense, doesn't get wide guarded or follow me, it takes Calyrex Shadow Rider off the field and establishes a massive advantage for Grant. Not only does he have the Pokemon advantage, and it's the restricted Pokemon down for Dom, he has one-sided Tailwind here that means that Dominic's gonna have to give up even more to try to catch up in this position. And with only one Pokemon left, you can't imagine that that is Tornadus because it would be too passive of an advantage. If it is Tornadus, it's just far too passive. And I love this terrestrialization here as well because this Reggie Drago does have the Ghost Terra type and it's going to keep it safe from this Iron Hands that is packing that fake out. You can't fake out anymore, and it's just going to allow this Reggie Drago to continue to exert this pressure. The Iron Hands doesn't go for that, though. Doesn't want to fall victim to that Ghost Terra, but it allows the Smeargle to just go down, knowing that that Dragon Energy is not too long after that. Grant continuing to find ways to get offense off, using the Whimsicott Moonblast to make sure to get something out of this turn. Smeargle traded for Whimsicott is only to Grant's advantage as he already has the Pokemon lead and now is up 3-2. That's better than 4-3. It is, but it's tough because even if you have that Tornadus in the back and you set the Tailwind, does the Iron Hands have the damage output to deal with the rest of the team that Grant has? No, it, it really can't be Tornadus for Dominic at this point. If it's Tornadus, uh, then it was the team construction would have meant that it was three supportive options all there to focus on damage output from the Calyrex Shadow Rider, which meant that that Calyrex Shadow Rider going down on turn one was nearly the end of the game. If it's Urshifu, Instead, then there's a way back, but it's not. It's Tornadus. It was full support around the Calyrex Shadow Rider that was lost on the first turn. Tailwind is not going to help Iron Hands catch up and beat these Pokemon. Tornadus is going to do damage fairly slowly itself. It's not over yet, but it is pretty close to it. It's tough, too, because I think when you look at some of the, the single target damage that this Reggie Drago is also able to do, it just makes it more difficult. Even if you do have the, the Draco Meteor that's going to drop your special attack, I don't know how much you really care about that, knowing that the Reggie Drago is just consistent damage output at this point. The Ghost Trastalization also cuts off avenues for Iron Hands to start drain punching and healing back up while trying to trade away the Reggie Drago. Oh, with so limited health left for Dominic's side, every wild charge that's also recoil is just further progress for Grant. It's the kind of trade that when you have a big lead like this, for Grant, more trades is just to the better. Well, the Tailwind at least gives you an opportunity to stagger it out. So after Grant expires, you do get the speed in your control for just a little bit. But the Behemoth Blade and the Tornadus is just going to be a one-hit knockout. So even if you were hoping that the Bleak Wind Storms would help to keep this damage output strong, you now have your Tornadus down for the count. The Iron Hands has to take a single target Dragon Energy, and this Assault Vest is not going to keep it safe for too much longer. Even the Wild Charge into the Ready Drago provides you with that recoil and not even the reward of the knockout. This is one of those matches that comes down to an extremely volatile turn one. It looks so lopsided in the end here. Dominic just getting blown out by the Reggie Drago on the other side, picking up all the damage that it needs. But it all stems back to that turn one. There are a million timelines where that turn one works out a little bit better, but because Calyrex Shadow Rider just went down to Tailwind plus Draco Meteor before ever attacking, these are all the dominoes that fall after this. It's one Pokemon at a time, ending with Iron Hands going down to Sacred Sword and giving Grant the match. But it all comes down to that very first turn of that game number two. Congratulations to Grant and 